It's an official day of remembrance at Hugo Chavez's mausoleum. The five branches of the armed forces are here to pay tribute to their late president. You, the tallest one, get over here. Some seem a bit less professional than others. Look, if someone feels unwell, they can slowly walk to the back. We don't want people falling over fainting here, got it? The Bolivarian militia is made up of civilian volunteers, men and women of all ages. They're the guards of the Chavista revolution, ready to defend the regime against rising threats. We Venezuelans know how to defend ourselves, okay? We'll do whatever it takes to defend our homeland. A nation of armed fighters. Hugo Chavez's dream for this came to life in 2007 when he established the National Bolivarian Militia by decree. Today, it has 1,600,000 members across the country. Good morning, neighbours. First Lieutenant Marrero has just arrived with all his militiamen and women. To the east of Caracas, in the district of Petare, the Chavista government still has a stronghold. This lieutenant used to be in the army. All right, everyone, pay attention. Now he runs a battalion of 300 militia men and women in the Jose Felix Rivas sector. Let's review our defense plan here, a scenario which involves an armed invasion of our territory by the United States of America. The instructors in uniform are army and police reserves, but also members of the militia. Today we're going to use these wooden weapons for this training exercise. Every Saturday these unassuming civilians carry out military drills. The enemy would probably come up through here, gentlemen. The training's rudimentary and the weapons are just props. The real rifles are kept in the barracks, ready to be handed out if they come under attack. When something happens, some kind of invasion, we'll need to do this for real, with rifles, real rifles. Residents here firmly believe the United States is plotting a military invasion to try to bring down their socialist government. When things really go down, when everyone hears that first gunshot ring out and the first casualty falls, everyone will be terrified. Those who dare will rise up against it because bullets and bombs don't have GPS. They don't just kill Chavistas, they'll kill everyone here. In the face of growing unrest, the number of militia volunteers has tripled in the past year. In early 2019, Nicolás Maduro created 50,000 units, each with 30 members across the country. Lieutenant Marrero set up his base at a school in Petare. We need to be fueled by the power of the masses, because we are the people too. And this nation is united as one. And that one is Chávez. The supreme leader of the militia is none other than the late president. He even ranks higher than the head of the army, Nicolás Maduro. The son of our eternal and invincible commander, Nicolas Maduro. The militia, like the whole regime, is propped up by the legacy of Hugo Chavez. On weekends, members of the militia from the Jose Felix Rivas district train in a schoolyard. Sometimes they get weapons training at a real military base. There are plenty of senior citizens among the ranks. This militia doesn't turn anyone away. He can't see? I can see a little bit. Ah, okay. But can you see me? Yes, you're holding a notebook. Can you see the ground? Uh, the ground, yes, I can see it. No one is left out here. We are inclusive. These are the armed masses. These men and women of modest means haven't escaped the hyperinflation and shortages. But they get some perks here free meals and priority access to government aid. Significant advantages in a country in crisis. The most dedicated are driven primarily by their political convictions. Did we come here for a handout? No, we must be productive and proactive. Adoseli is one of the most active members of the militia in her sector. 
She runs a small sewing business with her husband and often barters with neighbours. We've been getting ready for these hard times for ages. For example, we do a lot of sewing, upholstery and carpentry. But people often don't pay us with money. This war they're waging on us isn't just about food. There's no cash around either. She blames the crisis on meddling and acts of sabotage by the opposition, the United States and their allies. Sometimes there are power cuts. The power cuts are directed against our electronic equipment. You're not shooting at me, but you're damaging my fridge. All of Adoselli's family has joined the militia. Weapons have become a normal part of life here. What's this sword move you're talking about? For these Chavista men and women, losing their regime would be unbearable. They're determined to protect it, whatever the cost.